My next stop on this 48 hour road trip is Nottingham, where the girls rehearse in their own special way. We were put in the Guinness Book of Records for most successful female act of the century, which the century so far is only six years. <laughs> um, but um, that was still nice. We know we haven't sold as many records as like Madonna and and every, a few other people in the list. But it was still nice, it's a nice achievement and we got a nice disc to put on our walls. This is to speak for themselves, Heidi, OK? okay. I've reason. got a disc as well, actually. You, you got a disc? Part of it. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice, you said a disc. It's too. nice though, it's all good. Can you give us part Yeah, of it? for three, two. Two, yeah. Two of them. Yeah. Where did you put your, your first disc? Somewhere, I've got like a little hallway and I put it... I've got three now, actually. No, four, <laughs> including the little midget one. Yeah. So, <laughs> I actually haven't ever put my, any of mine up. They're in my You're attic. Joking. No, why? They're in my Ooh, attic. I never. Attic. Do you know why? Because when I go home, I like to not... I like to just forget about, you know, everything, because you're constantly... You know, oh, it, you're constantly a part of Sugar Babes all the time, which yeah. is a good thing. And then you go home, you switch the TV on, and you see yourself again. And then when you go out, someone decides to remind you of yourself again. So when I go home, I just kind of like to see just walls and regular pictures and. Oh, you know. fair enough. Keisha Buchanan, the yes. last one standing. Yes. The last existing member of Sugar Babes. Yes. Which and how long has that been now? Um, we formed the band when we were 13. Okay. And then, um, so, I don't know, you do the math. Remember, I left school. Oh, no, don't let me do the math. You've known me long enough to know that's not the way. So, I think everyone else will be able to, but um, I'm definitely proud that I've been able to see it from the beginning, just progress into what it is today. So, yeah. it's a lot more to me than just a group, because I've been a part of it for so long. It's affected yeah. everything, you know, um, in my life, so... Well, effectively, I mean, it is your world, you know, because obviously, as you say, you started when you were kind of 13. Yeah. And so that, I, obviously, that means you've never done what a lot of people get an opportunity to do, which is, for example, go work and get experience. a job in Topshop or... Yeah, it's my first job and work experience, which I was really upset about. Oh, so you about. didn't get to go and do <laughs> your, your two weeks at Boots I or whatever. I didn't, and I was really upset. Oh. That's one thing that I, I always wanted to do, believe it or not. What would you have asked to do? I don't know, probably working in a salon or something. What, like a bit you... of beautician kind yeah, of? Yeah, I think so. OK, so, I mean, would you be willing, like, even now to do a, a back sack and crack waxing? I mean, <laughs> is that... That's one thing that I would not do. <laughs> I can hardly get waxing myself, so, no. I I live my life in chains, got my hands in chains. Can't stick with a cause that I got with a deal like this. I must insist. Cause I've more to do. Be the way I think a woman should. Put me into my own hands. And this means that I can't understand why I'm taking me. But enough of stuff. And now it's time to think about me. Where you can easy gamble your life away Second after second and a day by day You play the game or you walk away It's a new turn on a blue day And a cool little life for me And it's all good To begin with, you know, it, it, was, it was quite difficult getting in Marilyn, obviously, because Mucha is a really hard act to follow. You know, she's a fantastic singer. And I really thought, how are they going to do it? But in Mel, in a, in a strange sort of way, sounds a bit like Mucha. She's got that deep tone. She's got that sound of kind of gruff, kind of edgy voice. So she, you know, it, it was almost like she was tailor-made to be a sugar baby. I'll be stronger than I've ever been. No more stillness, more sunlight. Everything's going to be all right. OK, cool. Thank you. I've been discussing about that for a day, so... Oh, <laughs> oh thank you, mate. Cheers. Cheers, Dave, as well. <laughs> thank you, brother. I think what, what Sugar Babes has always been about is being individual, whichever line-up you're talking about. 
And Amel, Amel's brought that again. She's got her own character and style of singing and personality, and she's just, you know, herself. She's not trying to be someone else. A lot of the interviews you you did when it when it when Mutia left focused on how upsetting it must be for Keisha, yeah. her school friend leaving. Yeah. No one really kind of bothered to to think. Well, you know, you were you were with her for five years. You know, yeah. you two were, were really good friends as well. It was really upsetting because we'd spent so much, you know, so many years together and gone through so much together. Mm. And Mutia had problems, and I. I I was really close to her when she left the band. And you did do all your best to help her through a yeah, lot of Yeah, and I wanted things. to help her through them yeah. problems and tried to support her. And she she didn't tell us she was leaving. She told the management, and and that was it. And what you, you do you think it would have been better? For, it would have been nice if she sat you you and Keisha yeah, down and gone. Yeah, but I girls, suppose it's... people deal with things that you know how they feel at that yeah. situation. And yeah. I'm sure maybe maybe she just felt uncomfortable at the time doing that. When people say, do we keep in contact with her? I I haven't spoken to Mutia since she left because she didn't tell me she was leaving and she's she's never called. But that doesn't mean I, I don't like it or you know no, I'm angry of with it not. or you know I I I hope she's she's good and she's enjoying what she's doing and yeah things like that. Every member that's been a part of the Sugar Babes um, has um, someone's been able to relate to them in some 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 way. I think because we listen to so so much different types of you know music, mm -hmm. and to say this in the most humble way possible, we're fans of our own music. So, you know, we know that if we really hate it, the chances the chances are that everyone else will because we're not really feeling it. We are uncovering the sugar babes today, so I was going to ask, uh, why, why, why did you get the girls involved? It's completely different. It's what we do, yeah. To what we do, you okay. know, so in that sense it works really well, yeah. and it's, you know, it's all different. A cross-section of music. cross-section of music is, coming together is. and just, you it know, for a, for a good cause, basically. You know, really pleased that they're, you know, they're, they're here um, to uh, support Water with us. I love the song that we're going to do with them, yeah. Everybody Hurt by R.E.M. Yeah. But the lyrics are so similar on each verse, so I get just confused slightly, don't I? with what, which verse I say, the day and the night, and the next one's like the night and the day, and I keep yeah. getting Have confused. you all struggled with learning the lyrics? I mean, my one's like probably the most easiest part to yeah, learn, because all I just say is don't throw your hand. Yeah. And then don't throw your hand. Yeah, it's the repeat. Yeah, it's like, yeah, it's on. Happy yeah. days. Oh, and hold on. Playing a lot quieter than we were in rehearsal room because I think it's only loud you want to be to hear sounds. Yeah. Do you want the sequence later? One of the successes with the Sugar Raves has been the fact that the music appeals to a vast cross section. It's not, it's not music for the little girls or you know whatever. It's music that, that, that generally across the board you'll find you know 30, 40, 50 year old people you know getting into their music and that's. That's because it's quality music. Yeah. Normally I just use one, yeah. but the one I'm using, even if I switch ears, it's like I can only hear myself. I mean, I can hear the male, I can't hear myself. I've learned so much, not only just about myself, um, but just about life in general. I also appreciate, you know, Mutia, Siobhan, Heidi and Amel for, you know, helping this journey um, move along. Do, do you still see Mutia? I mean, does the friendship continue? Um, or are you giving each other a bit of space? or A bit of both, to be honest. Mm -hmm. I met up with her after she left the group, mm -hmm. and um, I saw her um, at the Mobos and stuff. And, you know, it's, things are definitely fine between us, but obviously it's going to be difficult for me, especially because I went through, let's say, you know, my first bra with Mutia and, you know, your first periods and all that kind of mm -hmm. stuff. So we went through a lot of, you know, our first together so it's hard for me because I can't 
ever erase the past. And I just remember always, you know, going into the studio and literally leaving the studio at like six o'clock in the morning for years and years and years and, and going straight from the studio to school, leaving school two hours afterwards, going back into the studio. Those things I can't erase because that was the build of what we have today. And I think, I, 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 th I know that I'm in, I was more comfortable. The moment Heidi joined the group, yeah. I know that that's when everything, we became, you know, the sugar babes. It was a bit weird, but the girls have really been supportive and, you know, and it's, it's better now, it's fine. He's going to tell us when to go. He's going to tell us when to go, so just wait here. What do you say? Don't worry, just stand there. <laughs> what are we saying? Literally, just before we go on stage, just go, talking for all three of us here, um, we do get really, like, a just sudden burst of nerves. Like, really, like, my stomach just goes... Whoa. And then um, and they go on stage, like, sing the first line, and then you just feel back to normal, and it's fine. <laughs> Because we called around other people, and these girls were the first girls to come back to us, and they said, Yes, sir. Thank you so much. A massive, massive, massive welcome to the Shippers. You're a spiritual person, aren't you? Yeah. Andy? And do you, do you pray? Yes, I do. And do you believe that um, that whoever the big man is upstairs has had a, has had a say in, in your success and getting in the band? And do you, do you thank him for it? Yeah, it's a, it's this is going to sound really cheesy, but I remember the week before I joined Sugar Babes, I was fed up in my job, and it was about one in the morning. I had a ten minute break, so I went outside and sat on a bench, and. This sounds really cheesy. Come on. And I was crying. Oh. Because I really oh, wanted to be a singer and I was fed up with the job and I had no money. And I, I said, I was praying to God and I said, please, you know, I just really want this and I've worked really hard. And the week later, I was in Sugar Papes. So God sent Keisha and Mutia. He did. <laughs> and, and you. The, and the. Oh. oh that's nice. <laughs> We kept getting it wrong so many times, though, yeah. so Banging it's quite nice to know we know it now. Well, I didn't even know, I just made it up back to you. Oh, Heidi! What? Was you going to say, I knew it? I said, I, I didn't. Did you know it? Just then, I didn't. Oh, yeah, true. Yeah. Did on the nice. day. Yeah. Did you go in there? Yeah. It's locked. Oh. 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 Look, nothing's ever locked, OK? Yeah. Where I'm from, we keep...